Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, a message instantly came up. I was like, wow, um, I can't actually read it from here. So um, hopefully Charlie will. Uh, welcome. Uh, it is Thursday, haunted Thursday. Um, do you like the hat? A friend turned up with it on Tuesday. It was just, she's made two, one for Miss Jennifer and one for me, and it's got my logo on the front for uh, my children's side of things where I do cooking, crafts and gardening with them. So I thought I'd wear it today because I'm very proud of it actually. It's rather lovely. Um, we're going to make hot cross buns. Traditionally, we always eat those at Easter. They're actually delicious all year round. Um, but I'm going to show you how to actually make hot cross buns. Once again, very simple. Um, so tasty, make the house smell amazing and they give you time to do other things because of the proving. Never worry about that time on proving because it really is a, an excellent time to be able to cook whatever you're doing for tea or tidy the house or check your Facebook, whatever it is that you would like to do. Okay, so um, first of all, no, I'm not going to start with that, you see, not even thinking straight. I'm going to start with making our yeast mixture. So I've got my yeast in here. I did see the recipe had been put up by Charlie, so thank you, Charlie. Um, I've got my yeast mixture. I'm going to add in, um, and it's on this side, a... It so is not on that side, I haven't got my glasses on. Um, a quarter pint of water there. And I'm going to mix in one teaspoon of sugar from the sugar that we'll be putting into the buns anyway. So we're just going to leave that on one side. I'll just leave that in there. Um, it just needs to sit for five minutes. But if I do it now, while I'm putting everything else together, it will be ready for me. In fact, if I put it just in the front there, you should be able to see it rise up because it does a jolly good job of it. So we're going to put our flour, and I've already got the salt in here, into the bowl. Um, and then we're going to put in two teaspoons of mixed spice. So I love it, so I don't mind if they're slightly heaped. Um, so that's a preference thing, how much spice is in there. Um, so think about that. Um, now, instead of sieving it all through, which I could, um, I tend to take a hand whisk and literally just mix it all round. So that way I've got everything in there and I've made sure if there's any lumps and things, I've got them out. So now those very dry ingredients are in there. We're going to add the other dry ingredients. So our currants. Every hot cross bun needs currants. Um, mixed peel. Now this is homemade mixed peel because I can't buy it here easily. Um, I can from about late November. It starts coming in the store for Christmas, but of course I already need it before then for making my mince meat or my Christmas puddings and hot cross buns. So um, it was something I just learned I needed to start making. And let's add our sugar in as well. So that is all your dry ingredients and they're in here. And I'm just gonna still use this balloon whisk to mix it all in. And if I can see there are some currants that are sort of stuck together, just get my hands in there and break them up. So using my whisk, I'm just gonna create a little bit of a, a dip. My daughter and I were talking about that this week. It can't be a hole because it doesn't go all the way through. And we're now going to add in there our melted butter, our warmed milk, and then our egg. Can you see how your yeast is coming up? I have no idea if you see all the... I need to find that out. So Charlie, what I need to know is how much of the screen do people see? Because I can see messages there and that's blocking the yeast. So I don't know if you need me to lift it or whether it's also blocking, or it's not blocking your yeast, your yeast, your visual of the yeast. Um, so we're going to actually 
to the egg. We don't want to put it in there as a whole egg. We want to put it in there um, where we've actually blended it up nicely. So just that motion like that, and then just go faster. And you're going to mix the yolk and the egg white and bring it all together. And then you can just put that as well into your, and I'm just gonna move these over to my bottom trolley, get them off of my work area. So that's all of that in. And as you can see, our yeast is lovely and full. So we're now just going to shove our yeast mixture in as well. That's everything in there. Just having a quick look that nothing else is left. <laughs> Always worth doing that, has been known. Okay, so I'm now just gonna take a spoon, use a wooden spoon, a firm spatula, not a flimsy one, um, and I'll try and turn it to the side, so hopefully you can see. Um, but we're just going to mix all of this in. And the flour was just plain flour, AP flour, so um, most of you should have that in. I do know flour is one of our things in short supply. There we go. So now that is all mixed in, smells divine. And I'm just going to tip it out onto my table and knead it. So I think you can see that there. So just before I tip it out, I'm going to add a bit of flour because otherwise I'm not going to have a base for it to, there we go, oh, much flour there. Let's take what's remaining on here off, push that out of the way. So just bend over or flip it over with your hands and knead. Now you want to knead because that sort of activates the gluten and we want to do that, especially since it's AP flour, um, plain flour, not uh, bread flour. So we do want that, what's in there to be, uh, so you see I didn't put a lot of flour down. It's going to incorporate. So it's important to make sure you're not altering the recipe really. Um, and if you're someone who likes to put a lot of flour down, then use some that was part of the recipe. Um, that will save you from making it too dry. Um, and I've put in one and a half ounces of milk. Um, you can put one and a half to two and you certainly need to put more in if you're at a higher altitude but um, it's important to not get it too sticky look we're starting to get sticky now on here so we're just going to add a little bit more that's why a flour shaker is good because it's not going to let loads out right so i have got my dough nicely done and when I press it, let's do it up here a bit and hopefully you can see, because I'm still not sure about those words. When I press it down, it's actually coming back up. And that's what we want. That's what you want when you're making pasta dough and things like that. We actually want to see the reaction like that. Okay, so I'm actually just going to shove this now back in the bowl and get some cling film. Saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you want to call it, and put that over the bowl. One way, now we do it the other way. Another way around this is to put it into something like a plastic bin bag, one of those see-through ones, and seal it up. With room, you want it to grow, but you want the warmth that it actually creates through its own reaction um, and from the human things we we want that warmth to help it so there we go 
that didn't take long at all, did it? So we're going to let it rise for an hour, so not too long really, and it will double in size. A bit like this one here. I really hope my family love hot cross buns. I think I will have to be dropping some off tonight to the fire station because I will end up with so many. So here's, here's one I did earlier. And what we're going to do now, take the plastic wrap off. And we're going to take our dough out. So another little bit of flour. And if I hold it up, as soon as I put my fingers in there, it's going to start deflating down. But that's okay. There we go. One more thing to go in my wash there. Right, so now I'm just going to be knocking it back with a quick uh, knead there. I don't need to be as violent as maybe I am when I do bread. Um, for me, I find it easier to get it into a sausage shape. And from here, I'm just going to put a little bit more flour down. What I'm going to do, take the knife and I'm going to cut it into four roughly equal and then each of the four I'm going to cut into three. That's going to give me 12 buns, good sized buns so you could always make them mini. I really like mini things. Um, so there we go. So we have our 12 bits of dough and we're going to grab a baking tray and what we're going to do is actually yes you can see and then the flour that i put down i'm going to use one to put a bit on my hands and then i'm just going to shape them into rolls so a bit of flour on there so that i can without getting all sticky and here they go that one's quite big. I'm going to take a bit off there. We don't want that too big. And this one's looking sad and pathetic. So we'll just make it a bit bigger. Here we go. So for people in Great Britain, if there's anyone here uh, watching this, be it live or on the recording, do put it in the comments below what time you think would work better for you. We've gone for three o'clock here, um, but we're open to suggestions. And uh, I can always be doing different things at different times. That's not a problem. Here we go. The odd currents falling out. I actually quite happily will eat raw cross bun though. So this one feels small, this one felt big, so I'm just going to take some away. And the reason you want to do that isn't just so your buns look nice and the same size, although that is a good enough reason. Um, it's because you want them all to cook at the same rate. And if you've got a large one and smaller ones and things, then it goes a bit wrong. You're going to end up with some a bit too doughy, um, some burnt. Um, there's not much point in that. Go into all this trouble, you might just as well have 12 delicious hot cross buns. Okay, so there is my tray of hot cross buns. Um, but right now they don't have the cross on, so we're going to put the cross on. So you're just going to take a sharp knife and cut across and then back across the other way. We're going to do that on all 12. Watch your hands. No point in cutting yourself. Nearly done. There we go, we're at eight. And then we're going to leave them for another sort of 20, 30 minutes. Um, and just let them do a little bit of rising for us. Okay, 
So we have them there. I'm going to put a piece of cling film on top of them. It's like magic, isn't it? All these things. So this just needs to sit, as I said, 20, 30 minutes. It doesn't need to sit long. And uh, there we go. Oops. I'm not trying to seal this all the way in. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of protection. Um, and a tea towel would do that as well. So we're just going to leave those because I don't have a timer here. There you go, it's quarter past three basically. Um, so it doesn't take long to make these, does it? Um, I'm just getting all this off of my hands. Um, and the easiest way to get it off initially actually is to use flour because if you make your hands dry and then put it on, whatever is sticking to your hands will come off. And then you can just clean it all up as you clean your workspace. If you don't do that and you start carrying things and moving around, you're actually going to end up with some of it coming off and then you've got to go around sweeping or hoovering the floor. So, having done that, they need 20 odd minutes. Let's just move all of this out of the way. Here are some I did earlier. And let me put the oven on, 425. Um, so what I'm just going to show you when I hold those up, you can see that they've risen slightly. The crosses are quite wide. They've opened up as they've risen. But I'm just going to show you how to make those crosses more um, noticeable. And that is by putting some flour and water mixed in. So here's some. Um, I'm just going to show you how I made it. I literally took some flour took a spoon, took some water, not a lot of water, if I need more I'll come back for it, and mixed it. And it is easier to not put too much water in to start with and get it into a thick paste and then make it thinner. You won't have as many lumps, if any. Whereas if you try and put all the water in to start with, it won't, I'm just going to move those a little bit in case, maybe I should move myself. Um, so we just make it into a thick paste. And it literally is just flour and water. You could get very fancy if you want and use short crust pastry. So if you're also making um, any pies or anything for the weekend. Not that right now we've all got loads of guests coming or anything, but so I now can add a little bit more water. I just want it a little runny after piping, not too much more. Okay, and then here's the piping bag I was using earlier. So I'm just going to add more to this piping bag. I know there's not enough in there. Goes the thunder. They said we should have some amazing storms. So again, I'm just going to lift these up because so I'm going for that full concern that you can't actually see. And as much as flour and water doesn't sound like it's very tasty, in actual fact, the buns are very tasty, and the fact that it's bland. It makes it just that you taste the buns. 
There we go. All done and ready to go in the oven. So we'll put them in the oven and that takes 15 minutes. So while they're in the oven, we are going to make our glaze. And it's very easy to make the glaze that goes on the buns. It's two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of water. And there goes the lightning. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, swirl that round a little bit so I've got all that sugar moving. I'm not swilling it with great uh, glee because I don't want all the sugar up the side. I just want it within the water. And then I can put it on over here and away we go. And that won't take long. Um, in fact, very little time. So, once your glaze is made, which takes two or three minutes, um, unless you put it on a very low heat while you do some washing up and things. Um, see, mine's already bubbling. I'm just, uh, the sugar should dissolve. We're not trying to make a, a simple syrup. Um, really we just want as soon as the sugar has dissolved to stop it and i'm just about to say i think it's done it you can see how quick that was i do have a very fast pop that has to be set but uh, there we go so it's as simple as that made and I'm just going to leave that until those come out of the oven. But of course, I can't have you waiting around while I talk inanely. So here are some hot cross buns that I've already done. So they are ready. I put the crosses in. When they came out, they obviously had that flat matte look. And the moment you put the glaze on, and I put the glaze on while they're still on the baking sheet. Um, that baking sheet already needs washing, so I put them on that. And then as soon as I've glazed them, um, all of them, I will move them over to the wire rack. And the glaze will stay on there. What's dripped off is on the tray anyway. So there is hot cross buns.